This is the Sitam Worship Service. Welcome to the Sitam Broadcast Service, CBS. Good morning and thank you so much for joining us for the CBS Family Service today. This is a whole week after the Resurrection Sunday and we are so delighted that so many of you joined us uh, last week. We're actually going to be beginning a brand new series for the next uh, four or five Sundays or so. And uh, we want to welcome you to just participate in what the Lord is saying, even as we've celebrated the wonderful resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a little over a year since uh, we had to go into lockdown. We had to make changes to the way in which we live our lives, do business, and even the way in which we relate to one another. And during that time, we've gone through various challenges. Uh, things looked like they were getting better towards the end of last year. And then suddenly, as we came into the end of the first quarter of 2021, it seemed like a new surge was upon us, not just uh, here in Kenya, uh, but in other parts of the world. Our Deputy Bishop, uh, the Reverend uh, Dr. Karitam Bagara, is going to be speaking to us on the first part of this series of an unchanging God in changing times. Bishop, it's good to have you with us. Thank you. And uh, sadly, uh, the changes seem to be like a repeat of 2020. Yes. Like we're, we're being pressured to go back into lockdown. It, 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 you have the feeling, and I'm sure many do who are listening, that is there really a God who is concerned about where we are and the situation we're in? I'm sure there are people who are questioning whether God is still there and mm. whether he cares if he's there. Mm. And that's why we are doing this series, mm. telling them that God is there with us Amen. in each and every situation, and there is nothing that is happening, mm. as it were, behind his face. Yes. Everything is happening in front of him. Amen. He has a reason, mm. and therefore we should never lose hope. Amen. And because of who he is, we can go through this Amen. and come out victoriously. Wonderful. Yes. I know you've titled your message, Indestructible Hope, of course, based in the Lord. Uh, I'd like to invite you to just welcome our, our guests and members who are far afield, especially those watching us online and on the air. Yes, we want to welcome every one of you that is listening to this. And maybe through you, to invite all those that you can reach because I believe this series is going to be a blessing as we talk about this God who accompanies us in each and every season of life. And uh, we want to welcome and acknowledge those who are far off in our churches in America, uh, in Namibia, in um, Romania, in East Timor, and all those others that are watching us in different places. God bless you as you do this. We're delighted to have you. And now it's over to our moderator today, Kerry Kagiri. Hello and welcome to the Sitam Broadcast Service and to this family service where we always look forward to spend time in worship and reading God's word. My name is Kerry Kagiri and I am your moderator today. I'd love to welcome all who are tuned in to us on Hope FM, those who are watching us live on Hope TV and across all our social media channels. If you're on YouTube, keep sharing. The hashtag today on Twitter, go ahead and use the hashtag keep hope alive. As always, we start with our amazing CBS worship team. I'd love you to engage with their content. They did a great Easter concert. Did you miss that? Well, you can check it out right after this service on this particular channel. For now, Karibuni Sana.
Lord, you are our comforter. You are our burden lifter, oh God. And Father, in you we can find more. You are Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy, Jesus. Oh, Father, we bless you. Father, we worship you, King of glory. That you are mighty, heavenly Father, Lord. There is none like you. There is no one else like you, King of glory, Jesus. And we will never set up for less. We know there is more that's found in you. Thank you, Jesus. We will never settle for less. We know there's more that's from in you. We will never settle for less. Hallelujah. We'll never
in your presence is peace. In your presence is joy. In your presence is healing and restoration. Lord, we thank you for your mighty presence that is flowing in every social media platforms on all our platforms, on Hope FM, through to your people, on Hope TV, through to your people, for everybody that has agreed to be gathered in this place. We thank you because you are here with us. And God, we experience your peace. We experience your joy, oh God. Lord, we first start by adoring you and glorifying your holy and mighty name. That God, because of your divine plan, we could be here to worship you. In truth and in spirit, we could be in your presence to worship you, Lord. So receive the adoration. Somebody give God some adoration. Just tell him he is worthy of praise. He is worthy of glory. You are worthy, oh God. And Lord, we come confessing that, Lord, in one way or another throughout the week, even today, we could have sinned and fallen short. But God, we come before you because we know that your righteousness is, and our righteousness has been covered by Jesus. And on the cross, it was finished. So Lord, we come and we confess our sins because you are faithful. You are just to forgive us. If you're there and you need to just offer a prayer of confession, I'm giving you just a few seconds. Just tell God, I'm sorry. Lord, I love you. Cleanse me. Create in me a clean heart. Just ask him just for a minute. And if you claim to have no sin, you are a liar. So you know that you have fallen short. Maybe it could be in one way or another, but just confess that you need Jesus. We need you, Lord. And finally, let's take a moment to tell him thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you because you are a good God. Thank you because you're a mighty God. Thank you because you are a faithful God. Thank you because we are standing in this place. We are sitting in our homes. We are listening as we drive in the highways and the byways. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the breath in our lungs, oh God. Thank you so much. You are so awesome. And Lord, now we bring petitions and supplications to you, Jesus. Lord, we first thank you for preserving all our members in Sitam Istimo, oh God. They went through a cyclone. And God, you have enabled us even to be part of the, the search party and the rescue teams. Lord, you have given us the skill and the know-how to serve you in that way. Lord, we thank you for the preservation of our lives. We thank you and we pray that God, you will help each one that is calling out to you this day. Lord, there is this pandemic. We are just in the middle of it. We need you, Jesus. Lord, we need you for our families. We need unity in our homes. We need our children who are in drug and substance abuse to come out of it, oh God. We need restoration of jobs and our sources of income, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Offer a prayer for someone. Maybe you have it all together. Maybe in this season, things have come through for you. But there's your neighbor, there's your relative that needs you to whisper a prayer and show confess, um, compassion. Lord, may you provide for us that we may be able to serve one another in love, that we may remember the widows and the orphans and Lord, celebrate and serve them as you would have us to. Lord, indeed, we love to continue in your presence. We love to continue in your presence. No pain, no pain, forever and ever. to continue to stay in the presence of give him a celebration from at home i know you look crazy to your neighbors but just say thank you jesus for your thank you jesus it's such an honor it's such a privilege to just gather like this i am just so happy to be here i've been watching from my living room and you guys are such a blessing starting with my friend of course reverend kimasha and great people which assembly are you from say it in your mic 
Sitam Rongai in the in the place. My leader at Sitam Valley Rojo, I salute you, sir. Good to see you. I saw him trying to dance. <laughs> Anyway, thank you, thank you so much. Sit on Woodley, sit on Thicker Town, sit on Karen. Amen. This this pandemic happens so that we come together like this. Amen. And God is with us. Yes. Have I left any? Woodley, I said Woodley. Who else have I left out? Karen, awesome. We're all in. Thank you so much, worship team. You can clap for them. I know your neighbors are wondering, why are you clapping? Just clap. Clap, clap, clap. Welcome, welcome. If it's your very first time, I'd love you to go ahead and comment and say, it's my first time to join. And if you're seeing people commenting, saying it's their first time, whether they're using the hashtag Keep Hope Alive on Twitter or they're commenting on Facebook, welcome them. If you're a member, when you to a regular, you're always with us, welcome them. Tell them, thank you for joining us. Feel right at home. We want to send a special welcome to our family, our broadcast in Namibia, in America, in Romania, and in East Timor. We mention this ones because specifically we do have sit-up assemblies, but from wherever it is you're watching us, we are grateful you choose to watch us. We also want to send a special shout out to Sitem Alliance Church. This is in Machakos, that's Talanta Church. We are delighted to have you with us today. Now, if you haven't done so, you can be a part of sharing and you can be an evangelist in your own way by subscribing, clicking the notification bell and continuously sharing our content with everybody to see and enjoy the service. Please share this worship service with your friends as you continue to be blessed. As we talk about keeping hope alive, I have a personal testimony. Having had the virus and testing positive for COVID-19, I did go through a moment where I felt completely hopeless, being a strong, yes, me, staunch believer. And I felt afraid. I felt as though I might never have an opportunity to do ministry again. But the hope that I saw is a hope of glory. And I'm super excited because you might be tuned into this service and you're very discouraged this day. You might be tuned into this service and things have been thick. You might be tuned into this service and you actually have the virus and you are unwell in your body. I pray in the presence of God you will receive healing, but better still you will receive hope as we listen to the word of God. In this season we have a new theme. It's an unchanging God in changing times. Yes, the times are changing, but our God is unchanging. I am absolutely delighted to be welcoming uh, the speaker of the word today. But before that, we'd love to give, get into a time of giving, and it's absolutely exciting. The theme and the, and the word is indestructible hope. That's what the title of the sermon will be. Before I let it out of the bag, who's going to be speaking to us? Keep using the hashtag, keep hope alive and engage with us. I want to celebrate this before we give is a time of announcements. There's some few notices that are coming to you shortly. We are delighted to welcome you to our CBS family service. If you are watching us on Hope TV or listening on Hope FM, or those of you streaming live on our Sitam Church online social media platforms for the very first time, we extend a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us as we take time to worship and hear from God. We also have a special youth service live on Hope TV and on the Sitam YT Nation social media pages every Saturday from 2 p.m. Our CBS Sunday School happens every Sunday at 8.30 a.m. for ages 10 to 12 years, at 9 a.m. for ages 5 and below, and 9.30 a.m. for children 6 to 9 years. On Tuesdays, please join us on Hope TV, Hope FM, Facebook and YouTube at 5 p.m. for the After Sunday Live discussion where any questions you have about the subject of the sermon today will be addressed. We welcome you to join us on Wednesday for the live midweek prayer service from 5 p.m. broadcast on Hope TV and Hope FM and on all the Sitem Church online social media platforms. We invite you to send in your prayer requests before or even during the service. Our pastors will be praying with you and for you. 
We want to thank all our Safari groups for continuing to meet faithfully online. We expect Safari group meetings to be virtual, using social media platforms like WhatsApp or meeting by Zoom until further notice. If you are not in a Safari group and would wish to join one, please send us a message on our WhatsApp numbers plus 254-784-277-277 Airtel or plus 254-728-221-221 Safaricom and we will guide you on how to join one in your area. Planning to get married? We urge all our members to contact your senior pastor for direction on the steps to be taken in preparation for your wedding. Our pastors will conduct weddings, keeping strictly to the Ministry of Health guidelines, so please contact your pastor in good time to make arrangements. We express our deepest condolences to all who are bereaved in this season. We wish to inform you that our pastors will be available to conduct funeral services strictly following the current protocols from the Ministry of Health. We will also conduct the burial service on site according to the current Ministry of Health protocols as well. Please contact your respective senior pastor for guidance. All our Sitam Church offices are open between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Monday to Friday, strictly following the current protocols from the Ministry of Health. Thank you for staying connected to the Sitam Broadcast Service, and thanks for paying attention to these notices. Please remember that all our assemblies in the counties other than the zoned-off areas of Nairobi, Nakuru, Kiambu, Kajado, and Machakos counties are open for in-person worship services. However, if you wish to attend, you will have to register in advance to book a seat, and you can do so by using the USSD code star 304 star 933 hash for Safaricom users and follow the instructions to receive a seat confirmed for the service you chose to attend. If you are not on Safaricom, you can use the church website www.sitam.org to register. Seating capacity is limited to not more than one-third of the capacity of the sanctuary and all other Ministry of Health protocols still apply. The Deacon Board has scheduled and hereby gives notice that the annual Delegates Conference, ADC, for the year ended 31st December 2020 will be held virtually on the Saturday 24th April 2021 from 9 a.m. through a Zoom link that will be provided to all delegates. All ratified delegates will be eligible to attend the meeting upon advanced registration for the Zoom webinar. Any AOBs covering CETAM ministry should be sent to admin at CETAM.org. That email address once again is admin at CETAM.org to be received at least seven days before the meeting. God bless you as you plan to attend this important governance meeting for the ministry. Under signature, Deacon Martin Munyu, Church Secretary. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the service. It's time to give and allow me to say a prayer. But as I say this prayer, remember, it's an opportunity for you to give. It's an opportunity for you to sow into the amazing ministry that God is doing. And he has blessed you with those resources. Why not minister back to him? Lord, we thank you for an opportunity to give. We thank you for the resources that you've put in our hands that we can be able to give. Lord, for those who have nothing to give, I pray that Jehovah Jireh, you will be their provider. Lord, for anyone who has to give, I thank you that you're blessing them a good measure shake it together, running over, oh God. I thank you, oh God, for this opportunity. May we do it with gladness and thanksgiving in our heart. In Jesus' name, amen. This is how you can give. It is now time to express our worship to God through giving. Thank you for your continued support of God's work even in these trying times. As we seek to bring the spread of the virus under control, we believe that God who sees in secret will reward you openly and abundantly. 
For the easy management of our finances, we have established a common payment platform for all our giving, irrespective of which assembly you attend and even for our visitors. You can now give via mobile money through the platforms of M-Pesa or Airtel Money. The pay bill number for either system is 933-934. I repeat, 933-934. For the account name, please indicate the CITAM assembly you attend and if you have joined us in this service but you are not a member of CITAM, just write offering in the account space. Please remember that all the other CITAM people numbers remain operational. If you would like to make a direct bank deposit, electronic transfers or PESA link, please use the following account. The account name, Christ is the Answer Ministries, the bank, Cooperative Bank, a University Way branch, Account number is 011-280-617-639-00. I repeat, 011-280-617-639-00. The SWIFT code, KC-O-O-K-E-N-A. That is KC-O-O-K-E-N-A. If you prefer to give through our website, kindly visit www.sitem.org. Click on the Give tab and follow the instruction for online giving. Once again, we want to appreciate every one of you for every gift, every tithe, every offering and every generous material support. God bless you. It is time now to share in the Word of God and our preacher for the day is Reverend Karita Bagara. He is our Deputy Bishop here at CETAM and the title is Indestructible Hope. I am looking forward to have hope that will never be distracted or derailed by any circumstances around my life. Something special about him is he plays the guitar and we hope one day is how he'll start his sermon. I know you don't know I know, but I know <laughs> that you are quite the guitarist. Are you? I try to. No, oh, that's, that's how all good guitarists speak. Tell me about indestructible hope. Um, we want to talk about the hope that we need to have yes. as we go through this season. Oh, yes. Absolutely great. Use the hashtag, keep hope alive on Twitter. Looking forward to see you after this. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Kerry. Greetings, God's people. This is the first of a number of sermons that we will be having uh, as we think about the unchanging God in changing times. And before we share God's word, allow me to pray so that we can continue. Our Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus, I pray that it would please you to use me to speak to your people, and I pray that they would be attentive and hear what you want to tell them and they will not be distracted by anything. We pray and believe that you have granted that request. It's in Jesus' name that I, we pray. Amen. It is commonly stated that the only constant in life is change. But I come here to revise that and say that actually there are more than uh, one constant. God is another constant. In the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 6, the Bible tells us, I, the Lord, do not change. So you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. We also read in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 8, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. These two texts that are taken from the Old Testament and the New Testament affirm two things. The first one is that we have unchanging God. We talk of immutable God. He does not change in his essence. He does not change in his purpose. He does not change in his character. He remains stable and wavering in all seasons and for all generations under all circumstances. Men come and go. Seasons change, experiences may change, but our Savior does not change. The second thing that we see from these verses is that we are the beneficiaries of this nature of God. 
we as God's people are secure. We have a living, indestructible hope, courtesy of God's immutability. This is even true in a situation where we are going through difficult dispensations, such as the era of the COVID-19. And that is just but one of the situations that people face and it tests their trust and their hope in God. But today I want us to consider the life of Joseph that presents to us experiences that we may relate with at different times of our lives and different ones of us will relate with one or the other. Joseph has five stages that he goes through that I think are relevant in speaking to the fact that our God is unchanging and because he is unchanging, we have hope that can remain with us and we are secure no matter what we are going through. We encounter Joseph in the book of Genesis chapter 37 and if you read verse 1 to 11, I will call this Joseph's pupillage. This is a time of dreaming, a time when God is revealing to him about his future. As providence would have it, he was favored by his father. This is important for us to note because it is not something that he asked for. It is God that caused his father, or I assume it is God that caused his father, to favor him. And uh, this is not something that he has requested for, because when we are objects of love, it's not that we have demanded love from the people that love us. But that notwithstanding, his brothers stand against him. They are opposed to him because he has been loved by one that he has not asked, love me. It has just happened. That is important for us to note. On top of that, God gives him what I will call divine dreams. And the first one, he shares with his brothers. And when he shares with his brothers, they become, you know, more envious of him and they hate him for it. Yet, you know, you cannot force yourself to have a dream. And there is, there is a point I want to make in saying that you can't force yourself to have a dream or to be loved. It is to say that there are people that go through life and they experience either hatred or rejection just because of the favor that is coming their way. And maybe I'm speaking to somebody right now who is in a similar situation, that your trouble is coming not because you have done anything wrong, just because people have chosen that you should not be the one that should be favored or have thought that you should not be favored. Father, we find that he gets a second dream. So God is in his life. And God gives him a second dream about what the future will be. And in this dream, he decides to tell his father and mother on top of his brothers. The brothers obviously now are disgusted with Joseph. But we also find that the parents become, uh, you know, uh, what will I say? that they misunderstand the dream and they rebuke him for having dreamt. I suppose that this is because of a traditional understanding that a child cannot be elevated to be on top in a family situation. And so Jacob doesn't quite understand what Joseph would be saying that he is going to be the leader in their family. A traditional understanding that causes a problem. Again, it is not that Joseph has done anything wrong. It is just that he is misunderstood. But I also want to note here that God's work in Joseph is not governed by the evil attitude that he experiences from his brothers, nor is it governed by the misunderstandings that the parents have concerning what he is receiving from God. And I want to say, to those that may be suffering or may be in trouble because of others who are envious. Don't give up. As long as God is with you, 
as long as it is of God, then it will come to be. And he will give you victory as we finally see of the life of Joseph. But you will be taken through a process, but you need to hold on and to trust God. What Joseph is receiving is not out of merit. Joseph has not even had a prayer meeting asking God for these favors. It is all of grace. And my brothers and sisters, everything that comes our way is all of grace. God in his own sovereignty chooses who will get what, who will be given what. And every one of us are under the sovereignty of God. And God apportions what he finds necessary and important for us. That was the privilege that we find Joseph going through. The second one is that we find that Joseph is thrown into the pit. Ironically, this happened out of his obedience. He was sent by the father who had said to him, go and see if all is well with your brothers and with the flocks and bring, uh, bring back to me the word concerning them. This is found in the book of Genesis 37 verse 14 that he had been sent by his father. Imagine the agony that Joseph must have felt when he comes to his brothers, happy about, you know, being a part of the family and bringing good news from home. And I imagine that he had brought some food, and, but also to find out how the brothers were. And then he is thrown into a dark pit. This misery is being inflicted on him by people that he admires, people that he loves, people that he looks up to, because many of these brothers were older than him. Actually, all the brothers uh, that must have been in, in the field were older than him. The people he depended on are the ones that are causing problem. In this situation, we don't see the scripture saying that God either came uh, to Joseph or God spoke to Joseph, but God was still there. But for a moment, it seems that Joseph was experiencing what some people have called the dark night of the soul. It is that time when the heavens are silent. It is like the inter intertestamental period when there is no word from God. You don't know what to do. You are in a dark place. And I suspect that this is what some of us are experiencing when we are told that you have COVID-19. You will feel like you have reached the end of yourself and you wonder where is God. And perhaps out of panic, you're crying to God and you're not hearing him or he's not answering. But I want to tell you, God has not abandoned you. You can still have hope out of this story that we are reading of Joseph because God showed up. He showed up in an unusual way in that he sent some slave traders that come his way and the brothers who had thrown him into the pit come for him, get him out of the pit, but now sell him as a slave. But at least he is out of the pit. Not everything is resolved. Yes, there are things that continue to be a challenge in his life, but at least he is out of that dark pit. And I want to speak to somebody who may be going through a similar experience and I want to tell you that God is coming through for you. God will show up. He will not fail. Fear not. He has a way of dealing with each one of us. And even you, that is my listener, going through this experience, God will get you out of that situation. These people turned out to be a means of conveyance uh, that would take Joseph to his ultimate purpose. I think God made the stay in the pit to be a short one because as the scriptures tell us, he will not allow us to be tempted beyond our capacity to endure the temptation. And I want to tell you, you may think that it is over, but I want to tell you that the grace of God is still with you. When I say it is over, uh, it is that you may think that the grace to endure is done. I can't take it anymore. No, no, no. We have a great God and he will not allow you to be tested beyond your capacity to endure that temptation. 
you will be victorious because you have put your trust in God. It may not be COVID-19. It could be many other things that have come your way and you feel like you're in a pit. Maybe one of those diseases that we tend to think that it is incurable, like cancer or diabetes, or maybe you have lost loved one, a significant loved one who was making pro provisions possible for you. But I want to tell you, trust in God. Put your hope in God. Keep your hope alive and God will get you out just like he got uh, Joseph out of the pit. We know that after he was taken out of the pit, he was taken to Egypt where he is sold as a slave. And this is now in chapter 39. And I just want to read the first uh, six verses of that chapter. Genesis chapter 39 Verse 1 to 6, the Bible says, Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. And he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the, house, the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. I want to spend some time on this one. First, it is recorded that the Lord was with Joseph. And because of this, he found favor with his master. And he was made the supervisor of all the people that were working to the extent that his master gave himself to all other duties except the things he had left Joseph to run. All the same, Joseph must have been working himself to the bone because success is not a matter of chance. It is a matter of hard work and discipline. So Joseph must have been working very hard and he must have been a very organized person for him to succeed. And because of this, we are told the results were that Potiphar prospered. Prospered in the field and prospered in the house. Nevertheless, Joseph, who was the, the cause of this prosperity, we are told, it is very clear in the scripture, that because of the favor of the Lord, everything he did was prospering. But the prosperity was for the benefit of Potiphar. But Joseph remained a slave. You may be in a similar situation where you have God's favor upon your life. Everything you touch turns to gold. Everything you do is a success. You are being headhunted by many. But it turns out that it is other people who seem to prosper out of your gifts, out of your hard work and diligence, but you yourself may be in trouble. But I want to assure you that God has not forgotten you. Keep hope alive. Keep going and trusting in God. Now, this is important for us to remember because in this country, we are unlike Joseph 
many of us, when we are entrusted with a certain responsibility, we think about ourselves and not the people that have trusted us with that responsibility. We work for ourselves and sometimes not work for ourselves. We actually look for means of depriving what should be going to those who have employed us. It has become common practice in this country to steal from the people that have entrusted you with a responsibility. From our politicians to our public institutions to even corporate organizations, this has become a sickness that we cannot be trusted. But I want to assure you that if you go that direction, you will soon realize that God will not bless that which is done or that which is gained out of theft. God will punish all those who are gaining at the expense of those that have entrusted them with a particular either job or responsibility. But we have an example here of Joseph who decided to be faithful, to be true, to be hardworking in spite of the fact that he himself was not getting much. Of course, we could say that now he had a coat, uh, a new coat, a different coat from the one he had received from the father uh, in that he is a supervisor, he is having enough to eat, his life is better. But anyway, it is not long after that his hope is dashed. The little hope he had was uh, crushed by Mrs. Potiphar, who has a devious plan. And Joseph refuses to compromise. We know that Mrs. Potiphar asked Joseph to compromise his faith and sleep with her. And Joseph said no. And for saying no and doing what is right, he found the words of one William Congreve to be true. Hell has not a fury like a woman scorned. Joseph, for being the right person, was accused falsely of attempted rape. He became a victim of other people's lies and spite. He was unfairly condemned with no right for appeal, and he was thrown into prison. Isn't that also an experience that we are familiar with? That the person that is right, the one that speaks the truth, the one that is trying to bring, you know, uh, right things or right procedures, a right way of doing things in the place of work, is the one that is accused of you know, falsely accused, so that he can be kicked out and allow those who are thieving, if that is the right English word, to continue doing it. And it may be you that I'm talking to, that you have been in that place, or you are right now in that place. You're being accused of things that are, you know, are not true, so that you can resign or you can be kicked out of the organization where you are working. And it is because you are doing the right thing. But the people that want to corrupt the organization are fighting against you. We find that Joseph, for a second time, is stripped of his coat. But he must have known that it is better to lose a good coat than a good conscience. So he stood for what was right. I want to say, because this is helpful, that Joseph had a reason why he overcame. And I want to examine just a few things that uh, would help us, you know, so that we are not compromised and we don't go the way that the world is going. The first thing is that Joseph made truth his ally. Truth became his friend. And so when the proposition by Mrs. Uh, Potiphar was presented to him, he said he called it, by its right name, great wickedness. And he said, this wickedness is against God. He knew that he is under God 
in private, but even in church. And we need men and women that will remember that God is watching over them while they are at church, but also much more when they are in the marketplace. They will be like Joseph, who knew that the truth of who God is is not discriminated to be only in the church. It belongs to every space, every place that we are in. We are to remain true to what God has revealed in his word in every situation. But secondly, he rejected the prospect of gains that come through evil ways. He knew that God examines both the means and the ends. And he placed honor above prosperity. My brothers and sisters, we need to learn this lesson. Yes, wealth is good, but it must be got in the right way. We should not corrupt ourselves or allow ourselves to be corrupted for the sake of wealth. God is blessed when we get wealth in the right way. He is honored. And we should honor ourselves also and do things the right way because that way we will have a good name, a good reputation, a good name with men, but much more a good name with God. And the good book in the book of Proverbs chapter 22 verse 1 says, A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Joseph knew that he needed to have a, a good name by upholding his integrity in every situation. But I also think that Joseph must have been revulsed by the dysfunctional family that he had come from. And he did not want to be used to bring a problem in another family. And he knew that sexual immorality would be a fruit of short-sightedness. He will not allow himself to give himself to this temptation. By the way, at this time, Joseph is a young man before his thirties. Actually, he will become a prince or a prime minister in the age of 30. So this most likely is around 25. So the hormones are ranging. But because of these principles that he holds, he is able to say no to that which is dishonoring to God. But fourthly, and finally, I want to say that he employed realistic wisdom. He kept away from Mrs. Potiphar, except the, the final day when he has had to run. And even then, he is having wisdom. He is not allowing himself to be in the place of temptation. So he, he knew that he had to run away. And some of our young people have fallen prey to sexual immorality just because they forgot that they need to use what is between their ears. It is not meant just to separate the ears. We are supposed to use it. Friends, don't just sit in a place of temptation, praying and asking God to help you. He has already helped you by giving you a brain that you can use so that you use the wisdom that is resident therein. Run away if you have to run away and do what is right. And then God will stand with you. And it is no wonder, therefore, that the Bible keeps on repeating this, that God, the unchanging God, kept him company. I want to be like Joseph. I pray that you will be like Joseph and keep that hope that is indestructible alive. There is hope for those who put their trust in God in similar situations, even in this country. But we know that for Joseph, he ended up in prison. So Joseph was in pupillage. Joseph was in the pit. Joseph was in Potiphar's house. Joseph is in prison. And we find this from chapter 39, from verse 20, all the way to chapter 40, verse 23. And when he goes to prison, it is a repeat of what has been in the house of Potiphar. Verse 20 tells us of 39, 
Joseph's master, and this is the master in prison, took him and put him in prison. Sorry, this is Potiphar. Put him in prison. The place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. By the way, many of us think when the Lord is with us, we will be in the good places only. Learn from Joseph that God is not confined to only certain places. He is with us in the pit. He is with us in Potiphar's place where there are temptations. He is with us even when we go to the prison. So it says, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. He gave him favor with the prison warden. Verse 22 says, so the warden put Joseph in charge of all those who, all those held in prison and he was made responsible for all that was done there. He was in charge of people. He was in charge of the duties that were carried out there. And verse 23, the warden paid no attention. That sounds familiar. He paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and he gave him success in whatever he did. Success in whatever he did but still in prison. What is your dungeon? Because I know there is somebody who feels like he is in a prison. I want to tell you that God is there and God will give you success. Cut as a God's presence in Joseph's life, he found favor in that prison and he was promoted and became successful in all his responsibilities. I will not expound that because already we have talked about it uh, in the house of Potiphar. But we find that while he is there, he is a blessing not just to the prison warden who now is released to go and do other duties as Joseph is supervising the other work, but he is also a blessing to the fellow prisoners by interpreting their dreams. God is still using him. God is still giving him success. And Joseph tells us, do not interpretations belong to God. Tell me your dreams. And this is quoted from chapter 40, verse 8b, where he's asking those people to tell him his dream, their dreams and he interpreted them. God is still helping him. He interprets the dream and we know that the cupbearer is restored back to his, uh, to his position, but the other one, is killed. He must have been found to be guilty. But this notwithstanding, Joseph is forgotten. So that that chapter 40 closes by stating, the chief cupbearer, however, did not remember Joseph. He forgot him as soon as he was out of prison. Imagine his feelings. His hope has been deferred a second time. And Proverbs 13 verse 12 tells us that hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. His longing is not fulfilled. It is that his hope has been deferred. Nevertheless, the Lord was still watching over him. Is it possible that you are in that place? Perhaps you are even... Uh, uh, going to a depression because you have been disappointed not once, not twice, maybe thrice. And I don't know the magnitude of the, of the experience that you're going through of rejection or perhaps where your hope has been dashed. Don't give up because God, God is still on the throne. And when he is on the throne, all things are okay because our God is unchanging. He still watches over us. He who watches over the sparrow is watching over you. He who watches to ensure that when your hair breaks, he knows he is more concerned with you as a whole than your hair that is breaking and he knows which one has broken, which one has fallen. So God in his time, the unchanging God in his time, decided to cause Pharaoh to have the dreams. And because of those dreams, we find that Joseph is now invited to go and interpret the dreams in the palace. 
And even here, we are reminded that God was with Joseph. He remained with him. He kept him company. And because of that, Joseph was able to interpret the dreams of Pharaoh. Chapter 41, verse 41 reads, So Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet uh, ring from his finger and put it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in robes of fine linen and put a gold chain around, chain around his neck. He had him ride in a chariot as his second in command. And people shouted before him, Make way! Make way! Thus he put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, uh, uh, but without your word, no one will lift a hand or foot in all Egypt. Pharaoh became Joseph, sorry, Pharaoh gave Joseph the name Zaphenath Paneah and gave him Asenath, daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, to be his wife. And Joseph went throughout the land of Egypt. Joseph is promoted. And I always am amazed when I read this story because it is out of interpreting dreams that God got him to the place of Zenith, his Zenith, his ultimate purpose. But, you know, when you read it, you find that Joseph has reached the pinnacle of his life. He got a top job. He got a family, a family of a wife and two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And he has great, great influence in the land. And he is only second in command to the Pharaoh himself. Did he succeed here? Yes, by offering great wisdom and service to mankind. Because he was put in charge, he was the minister, he was the one also in charge of agriculture. And uh, he ensured that there was storage of a lot of food in the years of abundance and in the years of lack, he was able to, uh, to feed the generations that were behind them. Brothers and sisters, don't we need a Joseph? We just get one drought in a year and we have a crisis in the country. This was many years ago and Joseph must have put food and it was not eaten by pests. And the food that came first must have been the one that went to the bottom of the silo. So it stayed for more than seven years. So if it was the first year and it would be eaten in the last year, it must have survived for 14 years. I want to say we need men that are gifted like Joseph to take leadership so that we can also enjoy prosperity. Oh, that a Joseph would arise and take us where God wants us to go. The unchanging God was present to help Joseph succeed in the different seasons, in different geographical and social locations. He was true to Joseph in his pupillage. He was true to Joseph while in the pit. God was there in Potiphar's house. God went with Joseph to the prison and to the palace. In all this, Joseph remained steadfast and looking to God because our God is true. Jesus has been revealed to us and we are told he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But there is a big question here. Does God practice partiality? Why use Joseph and apparently ignore his brothers? The truth of the matter is this, that God's hand upon Joseph was for the benefit of those brothers also and many, many others that benefited out of the food that he was able to store for the time when famine was coming. Joseph would much later tell his brothers in chapter 50 of Genesis and verse 20, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. In other words, God used me not just for me. He used me for your benefit. Joseph saved many lives. His kindred, 
the Egyptians, the surrounding people groups, by this gift that God had given him. Thus, God's intention with Joseph was for the good of everyone. And I want to say that God's intention for any one of us that is gifted is for the benefit of everybody else around you. You are not gifted for yourself. Yes, it is for yourself, but also for the people around you. And God could not have had all the brothers as prime ministers, or all the Egyptians as prime ministers. He had to make a choice of one. And God today is in that business, appointing people to positions of authority so that they can benefit the whole uh, community uh, that, they, that they are surrounded with. So there are two lessons here as I close. First, we should not, out of envy, fight or undercut our Josephs. Who is the Joseph where you are working? Don't be among those that will be undercutting the Joseph. God has gifted them for the benefit of your family, for the benefit of your church, for the benefit of your, you know, your community, for the benefit of the public, if you are in public service, for the benefit of the country when you are a politician. We will not undercut you having had this that happened in the life of Joseph. But secondly, if you are the chosen one, if you are the Joseph, do not give up and do not compromise your faith in times of testing. God is unchanging. God is reliable and will be there with you everywhere and in everything that you do. He is God in the mountaintops, but he is also God in the valleys. Therefore, keep the faith. Hold on and trust God. May the Lord bless you and may he keep you and may he help you to hold on to that which is true and that which he has revealed. God bless you very much. Amen. amen and amen. Perry, over to you. Oh, this Thank was you. so powerful. God is God. He is with us in the pit. He is with us in the prison. He is with us in the palace. So many take-homes, as we promised. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing this and just allowing us and reminding us to keep the character, keep our truth our ally in yes. everything we do. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you. Absolutely powerful. And it's going to be a great study with our various safari groups uh, this week as we go and ponder on the words shared and this, uh, this time you might be watching us uh, from wherever it is you are and you've never made a decision for Jesus. Probably you do not even understand. You know you're gifted in a certain way but can't even place it through these trying times. I'd like to welcome you to the kingdom of God. And it's simple. We have no application forms. We have nothing. You don't need to pay subscription. You just need to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. Probably you're watching this broadcast with your family members and you can encourage them, give them the nudge. They need this. So just say with me right now, say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. I believe you are the son of God and I invite you into my heart to be my Lord and my savior. Make me the person you created me to be in Jesus' name, amen and amen. With that simple prayer, you can go and rewind the word and listen to it with the revelation of the Holy Spirit who is now becoming your helper. As you do that, I'd like to welcome you to tune in to our services. Remember, there is After Sunday Live on Tuesday. Looking forward to seeing you there. But also on Wednesday, our time has changed to 5 p.m. That's for the midweek service. So After Sunday Live for all the questions you might have with our Reverend uh, Deputy Bishop Sitam. Reverend Karita Bagara, he will be responding to any questions you might have on this. And I love that he highlighted, is your favoritism with God? All things are for the benefit. My special highlight, what I'm going with right now, there's so many things to highlight of this service. But what I'm going with is everything that hell has meant for evil, God is turning around for good. And that still reminds us to keep using the hashtag, keep 
Hope Alive. Share this feed, uh, share this video, and share your feedback. We want to hear from you. What do you, what is your response to the Word of God? Go ahead and share, tweet, post, retweet, share on WhatsApp. There's a share button on YouTube that you can share with all your WhatsApp contacts. Let them enjoy this service as well. As we finish, I want to thank you so much. There's a number that is running below the screen, but I'd love to say it for those who are listening on radio. It's 0728-221-221. So go ahead, WhatsApp this number, and let us know how we can pray with you, how we can stand with you. We are available for you. As we do this, I'd love to wish us the benediction, but I won't do the regular benediction. I'm still standing on the word that is our theme for this year, Isaiah 43:19. Remember, behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. May God make rivers in the desert for you. Have a great time and see you next Sunday right here on SITAM Broadcast Services. From me, Kerry Kagiri, it's goodbye.